Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee Talk. So, in our last episode, we learned how Hyde and Gala met, also about Gala's experiences with war. And also, I'm thinking Hyde has some feelings for his friend, in his cold, undead heart. We also gave our cosmonaut buddy, Neil, some solid bre uh, dating advice. And I think they're starting to learn the complexities of, uh, <laughs> earthly love. But anyway, let's continue our story. Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. It's raining pretty hard today. Protests arrive, arrives over government treatment of Atlantic immigrants. Now that looks familiar. Uh, Dwarven-made cars face... Uh, Dwarven made cars face challenge against an unexpected competitor, and the Mother Earth organization fights to save more forests. Hmm. Welcome. Uh, good good evening, sir. <laughs> Hello. I'm from the Federal Immigration Regulation and Enforcement Division. Or F-I-R-E for short. How may I help you? We've heard reports of an alien sightings in this area. We take the issue of illegal interstellar immigration seriously. Have you seen any creatures you would consider to be an alien in nature? <laughs> what you got in your pocket there, buddy? Hmm. I don't think so. But what should I be looking for? What's the alien look like? We're not 100% sure, but according to some eyewitnesses, it's wearing a spacesuit or something similar. Huh. That's, uh, a pretty eye-catching outfit. You'd think an illegal alien would try to blend in better, right? To avoid attention, you know. Yeah. That is a very good point. In fact, there may be a solid possibility that we have been running around after false testimonies. They're superior creatures, after all. Thank you for the help. If you see any suspicious activities, please contact us through our website. <laughs> Will do, sir. You don't want to drink anything before leaving? We're good. Take care on your way. Good riddance. What's the problem anyway? Trying to find a date, that's all. Phew. You really need to be more careful, Neil. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh hey, it's Myrtle and Aqua. Uh, good evening, spicy boy. Yo. Hello, Miss Aqua, Miss Myrtle. Have you both been somewhere together? Uh, we plan to meet here. It's just a coincidence we arrived at the same time. Would you like to order anything? Do you want to order first? Now you go on first. Okay. Can I have a cup of green tea with a lot of mint? Alright, green tea, plenty of mint. Here you go. Um, a rat cake? Ah, oh, that's new. Your drink's ready. Ooh. This looks really fresh. I call this Marakek, inspired by its origin. Uh, Marakek in Morocco? I heard the people there really love tea. Well, let's give this a try then. Oh my. It's warm, but very refreshing. No wonder Morocco is often associated with tea. How about you, Miss Myrtle? Do you want to order right away? Sure. I'll have the Tataric. What? What is that? Hey, oh, have I seen that before? I don't think so. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I wonder what that's made of. I'll look it up. Alright, so apparently it's 
a strong black tea with condensed milk, so... Hmm? Maybe? No. Maybe it doesn't have honey in it. There we go. Here's your Tetarik. Huh? Is there anything wrong? No. It's better than I thought it would be, actually. The taste is really authentic. Just like the Tetarik you get in Southeast Asia. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, where did you learn to make it? I traveled around Southeast Asia a few years ago. <laughs> so, you learned about it in Malaysia? Yes, sent from videos on the internet. So, um... How are things going in the office? As usual. Tiring. But thanks to you and your team, we made some good progress with a problem we've been stuck on for a while. I'm glad I could be of help. It's not every day a research can have an impact as direct as this. Only a few weeks after publication, no less. The thing is, uh, even with your help, we still need to do a ridiculous amount of overtime to make sure the game will be available for the holiday season. Oh, I want to say please don't forget to rest, but I'm sure it won't be that easy for you and the team. Uh, as if those executives care about us. Overtime is not mandatory, they'll say. Please see your family get some rest. But we all know. That optional overtime is a passive-aggressive move. We'll stay longer in the office anyway. Because if you go home earlier than the others, you'll feel bad for them. You'll feel guilty. I understand that so much. I hate to admit it, but yeah, it's guilt. I, I wish I could help you, or at least say something to boost your morale. Sadly, I'm not the right person to give you advice about that. For guilt is something that also bothers me a lot, even for things I shouldn't feel guilty about. And you know what makes it worse? I know the state of the industry, but it still saddens me to realize that my favorite series was born out of such sacrifice. Uh, I'm sorry I ruined the mood for everyone. Don't worry about it, Aqua. I'm not that bad off, you know. At least the company gives us decent compensation. Healthcare, bonuses, and so on. And we're already used to this. So, don't you worry about me, okay? Getting used to unhealthy working conditions shouldn't be a norm. Hey, cheer up. Remember, your research helped us out a lot. Thanks to you, the rest of the development is going to be much easier. How's your game doing, by the way? Actually, I have good news about it. What is it? <laughs> the game got approved to be showcased at Max West this year. <laughs> Nice! That's really good news! Congrats! Thank you. Uh, so, what's the problem then? I haven't confirmed my attendance to the organizer. Why? Confirm it, fast! Before they give your spot to another indie. I... I'm just not sure about it. What's stopping you? Cost? The booth is free for indies. That's good then, and the event's even in Seattle. You don't have to spend anything on travel or accommodation. It's a golden ticket. But... I'm not that confident. You passed the selection process, right? That should be enough validation to reassure you of the game's quality. If I'm not mistaken, the judges are usually prolific people in the industry. 
Also senior and also senior journalists. I know. But I've told you about my game, right? It's pretty non-traditional. And thousands of people would be visiting Max. Expecting full metal conflict and other bigger games. Every game has its own market, you know? And you'll be in the indie area. People know what to expect there. Gamers aren't stupid. <laughs> what if some haters visit the booth? What if they don't like my game and say bad things about it? Or about me? That's not gonna happen. It's an expo, not the internet. People are way nicer in real life, that is true. <sighs> Even after all that, I'll still be there by myself for the whole event. Uh, hmm. That one is a problem, yeah. Meeting that many people was already scary enough. Doing it for four days straight. Showing my baby to the public. <laughs> oh no, your baby. I just can't imagine the horror. Uh, You know what? Huh? So far, my schedule is pretty empty around then. Things stay this way until Max. I'll come with you. E? <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. Even if you're free then, you shouldn't waste your time on me. Oh. Uh, relax, or something. Nah, it's no bother. I'll be going to the event anyway. <laughs> Might as well come with an exhibitor badge. Uh, what about your company's booth? Don't worry about it. There are hundreds of us. I can just ask my lead to skip this year. But... 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 I'm coming with you. Whether you like it or not. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Good. Now, what are you going to show the game on? I'll have a laptop and a smartphone. Is the expo build ready? Uh, expo build? You're not planning to showcase the full version, right? Um, that's the plan. Don't. I can give you the guidelines on what to have for the expo build. Do you have the game with you now? It's on my phone. I can send you the build now if you want. Do so. Okay. Hmm. Got it. Now let's see. Oh? Oh, Rachel! Hello, Miss Rachel. <laughs> we'll leave those two to the side for now. Hi, spicy boy. Hmm. What's wrong? Uh... Huh? Nothing. I've just been practicing all day and I'm pretty tired. Are you having a concert soon? Don't tell anyone yet, it'll be announced tomorrow. But I'm going to perform at Coachella next week. Oh sweet. They're still adding new performers? Yeah, you might say that those announced this later... Oh. But it's still the biggest festival in the country. Yes. And I'm excited for it. I think I should celebrate with a special drink. Something sweet. What do you want to order? A sweet hot chocolate. Alright, no milk this time, huh? Hmm. Yeah, let's make it pretty sweet for her. Honey chocolate. Sounds good. Your sweet hot chocolate is ready. Thank you. How is it? Hmm. Not bad. It's not special. But it's enough. Please don't hesitate to call me if you need anything else. Uh, what else could we put in there? Maybe cinnamon? 
thanks. <sighs> Other than the instruction on the loading screen, try putting a time limit on how long they can play. Why? Wouldn't that break their immersion? Probably, but in case there's a good reaction to it, you might have people lining up to play your game. Don't want to make them wait too long. That makes sense. If you don't want to put a time limit on it, try ending the demo with a cliffhanger. That should get people's attention. Noted. Oh? Dad? Uh-oh. <laughs> what are you doing here? After what you did at the studio this evening, I was worried I couldn't find you anywhere around the studio. So I thought you'd be here. Ugh. <laughs> oh no. And now you're causing another ruckus. We're sorry, spicy boy. We didn't mean to cause you any problems. You are sorry. I don't have anything to be sorry for. Uh, oh no. <laughs> well, anyway, I better order something. What are you having? What would you recommend? Might I suggest a cup of Spanish Sahara? No, don't recommend that. I don't know how to make that. Oh, what is that? It's basically hot chocolate with milk and ginger. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds delicious. I'll take that Spanish Sahara. Alright. A chocolate with milk and ginger. Is that right? Yeah. Oh my god, there's a churro in it. <laughs> Your drink is ready, sir. My, my. This is amazing. Glad you liked it. Dad. Yes? Please just go home after you finish your drink. Not until you leave that good-for-nothing pervert. I need him. He's going to help me become more successful. I know, Morris. He is not a good person. His name is literally Molester. <laughs> the industry has changed, Dad. It's not like 20 years ago. Besides, since you left, he's been growing his brand, making his name. Managing a lot of stars so they become superstars. I still have my informants in the industry. Informants? Wow. He hasn't changed much. And even if he has, it wasn't for the better. You're just being paranoid. First, you were afraid of how my fans would treat me. Now you're afraid of the industry, too. What's next? You lock me in the house because you're afraid of the air I'm breathing? You're just too young to understand. Then make me understand. Uh-oh. Because this is definitely not helping. There are better ways. Didn't you learn anything from Mom? You were there- you were together for almost 15 years. But you learn nothing. Not even how to talk to your own daughter. Uh, Rachel. I... I'm sorry. But I'm trying, okay? Try harder. Because right now, you're not helping anyone. Not me, not you, no one. I know. But give me a chance. You know what? It will take time for me to learn, but I am learning. Or, you know, I could return to the industry. I could try to be your manager. Dad, are you out of your mind? You've been out of touch for so long. I told you I have informants there. I'm not that out of touch. Of course, there are things I need to figure out. But we... It doesn't work that way, Dad. You know that. Going from a girl band to a, a solo career won't be easy. If I take things slow, I'll lose all my momentum. If you don't want me to be your manager, 
Can you at least choose someone other than Morris? I don't think so. Mr. Lester is at the height of his career right now. He's my best chance right now. Don't be too paranoid, okay? I've made my decision. Now please, go home. Relax. And don't ever come to the studio again. I'm going back there. I need to practice for the festival. It's only a few days away. And it's a big chance to boost my presence as a solo artist. When are you going to be home? I don't know. I'll be staying at the hotel the label provided. But that's... See you, Dad. Wait, Rachel. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh. He's just worried about his daughter. Excuse me for a moment, spicy boy. Uh, I'm sorry about what just happened. You don't have to apologize. Yeah, we were busy minding our own business anyway. Uh, what? You, you didn't hear their argument, Myrtle? Of course I heard them. I just chose to ignore most of it. It's none of my business, is it? That's amazing. <laughs> What's so amazing about that? I don't think I can do that. Dividing and focusing my attention is... so completely. Especially when there's an argument like that. Are you saying you weren't listening to my advice and you were focusing on them instead? <laughs> no, I was listening. I made notes. See, you didn't even realize. But you are capable of focusing your attention. Now that you mention it, it happens naturally, I guess. Being born into a big family is useful, after all. Yeah, sometimes we don't realize what we're capable of doing. By the way, you want to head back now? Yeah, it's pretty late. Yo, spicy boy, we're leaving. Hope you had a good time. Uh, thank you for the drinks, as usual. Please take care on your way home. Uh. Hmm. I guess that's all for t Oh, hey, welcome back. Oh, you're back, Mr. Hendry. Uh. Are you alright, sir? Sir? Oh. Yes, yes. Please don't worry about me. Uh, did you manage to catch up with Miss Rachel? No. I lost her. I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm sure she's alright. I hope you're right. By the way... Uh, pardon me for asking. Okay, now I'm wondering if he can turn to, into a cat, too. Yes? Uh, throughout your arguments with Miss Rachel, something kept bugging me. What's that? Why did you leave the music industry? <laughs> now that's a trip down memory lane. You don't have to tell me if it makes you uncomfortable. Oh no, it's fine. I left around 20 years ago, just as we were welcoming the beginning of the new millennium. It was a great time for girl bands, you know. They were huge in the 90s, and they're still enjoying the leftover sensation of the past decade. I met my wife while working. She worked for a record label. That's how we met. I decided to get married and settle down. I wanted a peaceful life. You didn't find peace managing girl bands? Oh gosh, no. The politics, the dark side of the industry, none of it's good. But what hit me hardest was the fans. Toxic fans are the worst. The teenage girls especially, they were crazy about their idols. To the point where they started doing really unimaginable stuff. Like what? 
spending all their money trying to copy the superstar lifestyle, abandoning their responsibilities, their families, and the men. They were even worse. They sexualized the girls in every way you could possibly imagine. Edited photos, stalking, outright sexual assault. It was before the internet, mind you. I mean, the internet existed, but it wasn't as mainstream as it is now. I wasn't even the target of the abuse, but it haunted me. It was everywhere. Don't talk to me about peace. I couldn't sleep back then. Not getting enough sleep is dangerous for cats. Uh, what do you do for a living now? After we got married, my wife and I opened a record store. It's not big, but we have a very specific audience. We're niche, but they love us for it. It's more than enough for a little family. You said you're still in touch with your friends in the music industry. They visit my place from time to time, and we all meet up at least once a year. Usually it's at my place. Gosh, look at the time. <laughs> I should go home too. Are you gonna be all right by yourself? Don't worry about me. I'm an old cat. We're stronger than most people think. See you later, spicy boy. And sorry for bringing our fight to your place. Don't worry about it. All right then, goodbye. All right, so my thoughts are uh, Rachel's dad has been in the industry lo way longer, <laughs> so I figured that he would know uh, who Rachel should avoid. Rachel's afraid of losing momentum in the industry, and I get that, but uh, Henry seems to know what he's talking about, and uh, might be a sign that mm, her manager, Mo probably doesn't have good intentions. Oh, and we kind of did push them to the side, but uh, I hope Myrtle and Aqua's projects uh, turn out all right. Seem pretty comfortable talking to each other. But yeah, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I have more episodes coming soon, so be on the lookout. But yeah, again, thank you for watching. Remember to take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.